Now, if you have your Bibles tonight, turn to 1 Peter 1 3. The Bible reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I ask you tonight, Father, to shadow me on the cross. Father, I ask you to have the Holy Ghost come down and just speak through me. Father, I'm a willing vessel. Use me how you see fit. Father, help my tongue to not stumble, stutter. Let the message come across clear, pure, and straight to the hearts that need to hear it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we all know in the month of April, when you go to a store, we've commercialized Easter, just the same as we did Christmas. So, as Santa Claus is the world's symbol for Christmas, that imaginary Easter bunny is the symbol, the world's symbol for Easter. Now, I'll admit to you, because I'm a big guy, and you said, I like chocolate. So I will admit to you that it's fun to receive chocolate rabbits and eggs, uh, candy chicks, like them too. I even like the jelly beans. And some would even say that the Easter Bunny is a likable enough character. What I can't figure out, though, is what positive message the Easter Bunny has. In fact, my issue with the Easter Bunny is this. It's not what he does represent or say. It's what he doesn't say. He doesn't give a true picture of the real meaning of Easter. And if you will allow me, I'd like to share four things that the Easter Bunny doesn't tell you about Easter. You need to know them. If you don't know it, these four things about Easter... You won't have a full understanding of what Easter is. And it could quite be a permanent, fatal thing of not knowing. First, the Easter Bunny doesn't tell you the price of Easter. What did it cost to celebrate Easter? If there's any discernible message from the Easter Bunny, it is we should buy chocolate rabbits and eggs and all that good stuff, stuffed toys, an Easter basket, flowers, and other gifts. How many people you know have spent hundreds, just in your own family, hundreds of dollars for those things and not have an idea of what the real Easter is about? What the Easter Bunny doesn't tell you is the price has already been paid for you and I to celebrate and enjoy Easter. Now, let's back up just a moment here and get an understanding that uh, each... And every one of us has to uh, ever live or was born is a sinner. In Psalms 51.5, Behold, I was shapen in the iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Here David acknowledges that he is not only a sinner by practice, but also by nature. Like all human beings, we are born with a sinful nature. So anybody sits there and say, when you take that first breath, you just became a sinner. Period. So prior to that first breath, I guess you're okay. Anyhow. Now, if a person lives just a short time, like I said, or uh, he or she becomes a sinner in practice, Romans 3.23, for all of sin comes short of the glory of God. One of the most quoted scriptures in the Bible. Sin is simply this. Sin is anything that displeases God. So murder displeases God. Adultery displeases God. So does stealing, lying, impure thoughts, unforgiveness, unjustified anger, disobedience of any sort against God. Just the name, that's just to name a few of what displeases God. When we sin, we become debtors to God. We owe something. You ask how so? God is a righteous, holy God. God has decreed that someone has to pay for our sins. Okay? It's 
The logical conclusion is that we are the ones who should pay for our own sin. But we don't have to. Ezekiel 18.4 tells us, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it should, shall die. Right there it tells you. You sin, death is what you deserve, period. We owe God because of our sins. We deserve punishment. Anyone who says they don't, you don't know. You haven't come to truth with yourself. God in His love and mercy had another plan. Aren't you glad? He sent someone to earth who had never sinned to take our place and pay for our debt. And someone, of course, is Lord Jesus Christ. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Boy, I'm so glad I believe in Him because I got ever, ever, everlasting life. Because of that right there, I can face things in everyday life now. I still have some hiccups like today. I don't do good when I'm pushed for time as we found today. But God worked it out. Romans 5, 6 through 9. For we, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. That's us. For scarcely for a righteous man will die, yet preventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. Or dare die, sorry. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Let that sink in. While you were yet sinners, Christ said, I'm going to go take, I'm going to pay it back. They don't have to pay that. I'm going to pay that. As long as they believe in me, I'm going to pay that for them. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So believing in him and allowing that precious royal blood to clean you, make you white as snow, you do no longer have to worry about the wrath of God. You're not going to see it. You're not going to feel it. We were helpless because we could do nothing on our own to save ourselves. See, there's the problem with today. And it was my problem for a long time before I come to know the Lord. It was all Rod did it. Rod did this. Rod got itself out of it. Then, you know, Rod, 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 Rod. You have to come to realize you do nothing. You don't breathe without Him. I mean, just, I can give you a thousand and one examples, but that's the one I like. You cannot breathe if God don't breathe for you. Yes. Someone had to come and rescue us. So we needed someone to come and save us. And we couldn't do it. Jesus came at exactly the right time according to God's own schedule. See, there's another thing right there. I'm going to sidestep on here just a minute for God's own schedule. Stop thinking He works on your schedule. Because He does not. You work on His. While we were yet sinners, these are absolutely amazing words. I love these words. While we were yet sinners. Whew, wow. I'm just now realizing, or get, starting to get a little concept of understanding of why he saved me. I mean, I still question it a little bit. I, I do, and I'm sure everybody every time, like, Lord, why did you choose me to be saved? I'm thankful he is. He don't have to answer it. I'm just glad he did. God sent His only Son, Jesus, to die for us, not because we were good enough, but because He loved us so much. Whenever you feel uncertain about God's love for you, remember that He loved you even before you turned to Him. Wow. He loved you so much, He sent His only begotten Son to die before you, and that's before you even sat there and acknowledged it. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Number two, the Easter Bunny does not tell you the power of Easter. The Easter Bunny will tell you of the power of fantasy. You know, uh, I think I'm okay to say this in the pulpit. The little bunny that relays the uh, Cadbury eggs on the commercial. Or the little Easter Bunny that relays all the colored eggs. I ain't seen a bunny lay an egg, but okay, you know. 
You can find all, all sorts of stories and even cartoons that have absolutely nothing to do with the true meaning of Easter. Easter is a day when the power of God is demonstrated. Everybody keeps saying, well, I ain't never seen God. I ain't never seen God do anything. Right there. Nobody can deny that. Here, even the atheists cannot deny that a man called Jesus was crucified and bled out on that cross. Again, like I said, I'm starting to understand some things. I'm still a young preacher learning. But I'm starting to understand some things. Praise God. Easter, like I said, is the day when the power of God is demonstrated. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. Wow! This book is a history book. It's a science book. It's a social outlook book. It, it, it really is a mathematical book, too, if you think about it. It really is. So all them academics that we learn in school. Now, I'm not saying you don't need school. You still need school, okay? But this book will teach you everything. It really will. Mark 16. In fact, I'm going to turn now. I'm going to read that straight out of the Bible. That's important stuff right there. Real important stuff. Mark 16, 1 through 7. Said, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very, very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed a long white garment, and they were frightened. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way and tell his disciples. And Peter, notice Peter's called out himself. Peter, that he goeth before you into Galilee, there shall ye see him, and he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now look, let's get a little history. I like history, I do. The women here purchased these spices on the evening after the Sabbath. As it ended. So that they could go to the tomb early the next morning and anoint Jesus' body as a sign of love, devotion, and respect. Some would say, in that time, moving forward to our time, modern, that would be almost equivalent, they say, as taking flowers to a grave. Doing that. The angel did not roll away the stone so Jesus could come get out. He wasn't there already. And see, for them, what the angel did, he rolled that stone away for others so we can get in and see for ourselves that Jesus had indeed risen from the dead just as he said he would. I don't know how many of y'all can predict what you're going to do and be able to keep to it, word for word. Our Savior did. They laughed at him for it. The resurrection is, uh, is vitally important for many reasons. And I'm just going to give you three. There's several others. Jesus, one is Jesus kept his promise to rise from the dead. So by him fulfilling that, every other promise that he has made in the Bible, guess what? You can count on it. Take it to the bank. The check's going to clear. Number two, the resurrection ensures the living Christ, Jesus, is the ruler of God's eternal kingdom, not just an ideal, a hope, or a dream. I'm going to put a target on my back. So all y'all to sit there and pray to that person, it's all like this, I don't know what it's called. Guess what? Ain't ruling nothing. The other guy that looks like me, yeah, I think I'm better looking. It's gold. 
He ain't doing nothing for you. There's no reincarnation there. He ain't coming back as a dog or a grasshopper or a bird. It's not going to happen. The only thing that's going to happen is one of two things. One, you're going to spend eternity with your brothers and sisters, and mainly the Lord Jesus Christ, or you're going to be in the lake of fire with hell and everybody else. Three, Jesus' resurrection gives us assurance that we also will be resurrected. Wow. Man, check this out. Everybody knows this. The tomb is empty, right? Jesus is not there. He is risen. We say that every Easter. Why don't we say that every day? That's an important message. Guess what? That's a gospel in three little... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven words. Straight eleven words. You just shared the gospel with everybody. Anybody you say that to, you share the gospel. Now, that's the short mediated verse. Real trimmed down. But nonetheless, it is. And for 40 days after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to the disciples, proving to them that he was indeed alive from the dead. Go over here to Luke. We're going to read that too. Luke 24, 36 through 43. It says, and bear with me because I got a lot of scripture. I'll try and get away from it. The Lord said, no, read it. So we're going to read it. 36 through 43 of chapter 24, Luke. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had been seen, had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do your thoughts arise in your hearts? So see, he already seen his hearts. They had some doubts going on there. Behold my hands and my feet, that is, that is, is I myself handle me, and see, for a spirit have not flesh and bone, and see ye me have. So he's telling them right here, look, come touch me. You can't touch a spirit, but you can touch this. I'm alive. I'm real. And when he had thus spoken, he shewed them his hands and his feet, and while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. And look, I'm, I'm going to stress on that right there. And he took it. So that means he physically had to take it. Spirit ain't going to do that. And then he did eat. Before then. So he said, hey, man, this is good stuff. Thank you, folks. Amen. <laughs> wow. I wasn't expecting that when that come out of the rear there. All right. There have been those who have been risen from the dead. Now, check this out. Jesus himself brought at least three people back from the dead. Raised them up. Everyone else but Jesus died again. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus is still alive. And I prove it to you. Revelation 1.18 This is Jesus speaking. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Yes. I always say it. He went down and said. Oh this stuff is mine. Now give me them keys. And went on by his business. Number three, the Easter Bunny does not tell you the pr uh, promise of Easter. How quick we do nowadays, we forget the promise of Easter. The promise of Easter is simply this. Jesus is the first to be raised from the dead, but not the last. And that's the simplest promise that you can have. Through him, everyone will be raised from the dead. Those that have placed their faith and trust in him will be raised to spend eternity in heaven with him. For those who have not put their trust and faith in him. It ain't going to be chocolate bunnies and chocolate eggs for you. It's going to be very hot. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Pause here. Are you 
that neither. Concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not. In other words, don't sorrow for them. She knows where if he's up there, then don't sorrow for him. Sorrow for herself that she ain't there yet. You know what I mean? Don't be in a hurry, but be sorrowful that you still got to be here. I'm sorry all the time. I'm happy I got great people in my life, though. Great family. Okay, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which, is, which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, which with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we such are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That's pretty important in my Bible. I don't know if you can see that. That's been highlighted as soon as I got to the Bible. I don't know why it just jumped out on me. Verse 18, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. How come we are not comforting one another with these words? I mean, think about it. I'll throw stones. I sure will. I'll throw them up myself. Trust me, I'm carrying a boat around myself because I'm guilty. I think I'll witness good. No, no. I, I, today, I counted six opportunities and love passed me by because I was busy. I said, Lord, I'm going to do it right after I finish this load. And I turned, the guy was gone. That's on me. I, I pray God lets me cross paths with him again. So now I'm probably going to get in trouble with the boss because anytime a person goes by, if I ain't witness to him, we won't stop. Time out. Come here, let me tell you something. The other thing in this passage right here, these verses, is for the Lord himself shall descend. Verse 16, from heaven. Man, he's coming himself. He's not sending nobody. He ain't saying, hey, Michael, go down and get my kid. It ain't happening. It, what he's saying is, y'all come with me if you want, but we're going down here and get my boys and girls. Four. The Easter Bunny doesn't tell you the priority of Easter. Jesus has already paid for our sins. Romans 6.10 For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. There are some who think forgiveness of sin comes from their own self-effort, from their own good works. I don't know how many people I, I've talked to in the last six months. They believe this. They talk about how good of a person they are, how great of things that they do. Well, I give to this person, and I give to this charity, and I, I do this over at the Boys and Girls Club. I'm just, yeah, just going out there. None of those are actually things. I'll just give you examples. There's a problem with this theory. It's not what the Bible tells us. The Bible says good works ain't going to do nothing. It ain't doing nothing for you. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. Clears that all up for everybody. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. At least any man should boast. God ain't going to let you work, get him married, so you can say, well, man, look what I did. I got up here. No, ain't doing that. He ain't sharing that glory with you. Not in that sense. He ain't doing it. So the priority of Easter is that you accept the gift of Jesus has already paid for you on the cross. The priority is that you believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. Man, there's some people that on my prayer list, I can't get them off that fence. Because honey, I just can't get them off that fence. I pray for the Lord to kick them one way or the other. I'm getting to a point now, I'd rather see them you know, get kicked off on the cold side. And just instead of sitting on that fence. And they're, they're in turmoil, man. Their lives are in turmoil, brother Mark. I mean, turmoil. 1 John 5, 11 and 12. And this is the record that God have given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that hath the son have life. And he that have not the son of God have not life. Very simple here. Either you got Jesus and you live eternity. Not worry about nothing. 
or you don't have Jesus, guess what? You're going to get it for everybody too, but it's one that's going to feel every single pain known to you. And then some we can't famine. The Bible says we can't famine. We cannot understand what's coming after the afterlife. In eternity. Whenever, uh, whoever believes in Jesus Christ has eternal life. He is all you need. You don't need to wait for eternal life. Because it begins the moment you believe. Wherever it is. I'm up here so I pointed to the altar. My altar was here. Uh, Louisville Metro. Uh, third floor. 6A. Over in that rectangle station. Between 530 and 6 that night. On August 18th, 2014. And I'll never forget that. We had nasty dogs that night for supper. Uh, anyhow. You don't need to work for it because it's already, already yours. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So once you accept Him and turn it over, surrender is basically it. You're giving up control is what you're doing. The, the control you think you have right now, <laughs> it's all in your head. You don't, you don't have no control, okay? It's just your flesh lying to you. It's the devil got a hold of you still. You think you're in control of something, you control nothing. So, the Easter Bunny doesn't tell you the price of Easter, the power of Easter, the promise of Easter, or the priority of Easter. The Easter Bunny doesn't tell you about these things, but I just did. So now you have no excuse of it that you did not know. So I ask you, if you haven't already accepted Jesus, will you come tonight? Come on, Father. Accept His forgiveness and His eternal life that He offers as a gift to you. Don't get hung up on the world's uh, uh, opinion or view of what Easter is. I'm going to tell you this. It's the devil who's got everybody worried about the chocolate bunnies. And you know what? I just now remembered. I felt my wife looking. The Lord gave me a visual. I want y'all to look here. Here, we'll put the mic to him. I'm not hearing nothing. So will you come here if you ain't accepted Jesus and actually hear from the master of languages, the master of vocabulary? That's all I have for you, Father. Let's pray. Darren and Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you give us tonight, Father. Forgive me of the dry mouth and stumbling. Father, I ask you if there's anyone that does not know you, whether they're in the house of the Lord now or on Facebook, Father, that you would bring conviction over top of them. Father, draw them nigh, strong, powerful. Father, that they would come tonight asking for forgiveness, repenting of their sins, and surrender to you, and allow you to be their Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.